Welcome back everyone, it's Jacob from Martins Woodworking. In today's video we are going to take this old weathered limestone wall and turn it into this new updated retaining wall. To begin this project we need to start by removing the old wall and preparing the area and base for the new wall. As you can tell this limestone wall needs a little sprucing up. I do want to clarify I'm not a landscape professional, I'm just a DIYer who is sharing the steps on how I built this wall. A little tip, throw the dirt above the wall so it's easier to backfill later. Once all the old wall was removed, I began preparing the base for the new wall. This is the most important part of the process and the part you will spend the most time on. A flat and level base for the wall, just like a strong foundation for a home, is needed for it to stand the test of the time. This is the same with the retaining wall. The majority of my time was spent on making sure the base dirt layer was flat and level. I also dug it below the surface of the ground, meaning my first row of stone was almost completely buried. To help dig a flat surface for the base layer, a flat square shovel would be best. This will reduce the amount of time you need to tamp the dirt flat. I tamped the dirt flat with just my feet, but also a hand tamp would work great. Once I was satisfied with the dirt base layer, I added a mixture of gravel and sand. This is much easier to level out than the dirt. I also tamped this flat with my feet. When I was satisfied with the ground level, I began to bring in the first layer of stone. I set everything into place and once again checked for level. I'm using a 4 foot level to make sure things are level. I used a rubber mallet to hammer some of the stones into place and make them flat. Once this row is in place, everything will start to go way faster. The pavers that I'm using have no back edges to hold them in place, so I'm going to be using Landscape Construction Adhesive PL500 to hold them in place. This will help hold the pavers in place as I build up the wall, and I will just add adhesive to each layer of pavers as I go. I would like to mention at this point, if you are doing a bigger wall or have a wall in an area that will experience lots of water, installing drainage is something you should do. This will help your wall from structural damage and keep it beautiful for many years. I will not speak about installing this. There are many experts on YouTube that can help explain how to install drainage for a retaining wall. I did add a little bit of rock for drainage and I do have a natural slope. Now it's time to begin stacking the wall up and this goes really quick. I'm going to try my best to stack the pavers and offset the seams without making too many cuts. And I'm making sure to set back the wall as I stack it, meaning each row is a half inch behind the row underneath it. Before I put any adhesive down, I do a dry fit to see how I need to organize the pavers. When I'm happy with the layout, then I take off the row and attach it with the adhesive, making sure to wipe off any dirt or dust. I also backfill as I go so I know that everything is compacted well. I'm doing a step down with the retaining wall because there's a slope here that I'm keeping and I want it to be a gradual slope. So I ended each row about half a paver short of lining up with the previous row. This gives me a step down and keeps my slope gradual. With the final row of pavers going on the wall, the step down wall is completed. I need to do some final grading and compacting of the dirt and redo the grass area I tore up. But the small step down wall is done and we will now move over to the slightly bigger wall with no step down. I'm going to let the time lapse run as most of the steps are the same. I just want to include this in case this is similar to the small retaining wall you are looking to install. Remember drainage is important to install and most of your time will be spent working on getting the base layer flat and compacted. 